excited to be here with you today to worship God. I'm going to ask Caroline to read from the Bible at this time. Thank you, Brad. James 3 verses 14 to 18 says, But if you harbor bitter envy and selfish ambition in your hearts, do not boast about it or deny the truth. Such wisdom does not come down from heaven, but is earthly and spiritual demonic. For where you have envy and selfish ambition, there you find disorder and every evil practice. But the wisdom that comes from heaven is first of all pure, then peace-loving, considerate, submissive, full of mercy and good fruit, impartial and sincere. Peacemakers who sow in peace reap a harvest of righteousness. James says there are two types of wisdom, earthly and heavenly. And we want to go after having heavenly wisdom, which means we need to really focus on avoiding bitter envy and selfish ambition, and instead be peace-loving, considerate, submissive, full of mercy and good fruit. You know, when we go after earth, heavenly wisdom, and we reject earthly wisdom, we're promised a harvest of righteousness. And that's so encouraging. We're promised that no matter what we go through in life, that we'll be made perfect, we'll reap a harvest of righteousness, and that means we are guaranteed to see God, to be in heaven with Him. Do you believe this promise? When you look back at your week, how, how did you do in terms of being like this, displaying these qualities? As we prepare to worship this morning, let us focus our hearts and our minds on these things, amen? We would like to welcome everyone here this morning to the Sunday worship service of the Kingston Church of Christ. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, thank you God for your promises. Thank you that 
you promise that when we um, seek heavenly wisdom that Lord we will grow in our Jesus like qualities of being peace loving sincere pure submissive considerate and, and Lord that we will grow in just our closeness to you father you will bless us with a harvest of righteousness if we do not give up these things we pray father for the service we pray for all those who are here all those who are listening online we pray father that you would bless each and every one of us continue to guide us and be with us we love you we pray in jesus name amen amen swing low sweet chariot coming for to carry me home swing low sweet chariot coming for to carry me Stopping, let me ride. Oh, let me ride. Swing low, oh, chariot stopping, let me ride. Oh, rock me, Lord, rock me, Lord. Come in easy. I got home on the other side. Looked over yonder, tell me what did I see? What did I see? A man of angels coming after me. Oh, rock me, Lord, rock me, Lord. Come in easy. I got home on the other side. Six white horses prancing side. Side by side, side, by side. By side. Six five horses prancing side by side. Oh, rock me, Lord, rock me, Lord. Come and ease it. I got home on the other side. Swing low chair, stop and let me ride. Oh, let me ride. Swing low chair, stop and let me ride. Oh, rock me, Lord, rock me, Lord. Come and ease it. I got home on the other side. I got home on the. I got home on the. I got home on the 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 I got home on me
what did I see? God's gonna trouble the water. I saw all of God's angels come for me. God's gonna trouble the water. Now if you don't believe that I've been redeemed, God's gonna trouble the water. Oh, just follow me down to Jordan Tree. God's gonna trouble the water. Oh yeah, we're singing way. family and friends we are together again it is always exciting to be with the family of God this excitement is stemming from the fact that we mortal sinful beings by the grace shown to us we are able to come into the presence of a holy and righteous God to give him thanks and praise Praise be to Jesus. It is my pleasure to be sharing the message with you this morning. I crave for your full attention as together we search the scriptures for encouragement and faith building nuggets. Nuggets that can be applied to our day to day life. Let us pray. Great and mighty God, how special it is for us to come into your presence this morning to praise you 
to honor your name, to acknowledge you as the most high God. Be with us. May your spirit guide us, Father, as we look intently in your word. Give us a heart that will receive your word gracefully, Father. Be with us, we pray, in Jesus' name. Amen. Question. Is there anything in this life that you wake up each day looking forward to? There are several things in my life, in this life, that I wake up each day looking forward to, such as my wife and I aging happily and peacefully together, seeing our children becoming disciples while achieving their goals and dreams, among other things. Above all, what I'm looking forward to each day is the coming of the Lord. Hence, the title of my message, The Coming of the Lord. This is my greatest desire. It is the foundation of my faith. I want to see Jesus in person. I want to see him in the splendor of his holiness. I'm looking forward to telling my story of his saving grace and to hear these six precious words. Well done, good and faithful servant. Knowing full well that I have overcome and now it is home at last. Praise God. How about you, brothers and sisters? As servant of the Most High God, we know, we believe that this world is not our own. That is why Paul has this to say to us in 1 Corinthians 15, verse 19. In chapter 15 of 1 Corinthians, Paul's first letter to the church in Corinth, he reminded them of a few things, such as the resurrected Jesus and his appearance to many people, that Christ died for their sins, therefore they are to hold firm to the gospel that saved them according to scripture. Then in verse 19, he said something very profound and convicting. Let's read it. 1 Corinthians 15, verse 19. If only in this life you have hope, you should be pitied among all men. Wow. Where did that come from? Paul is helping us to look beyond this world through the eyes of faith and see the bigger picture that we can't see by looking at the world around us. If all in this life, Paul said, we have hope, we are to be pitied. Why? Because it means that we are in a sad state of affairs. Reason being, our focus will only be on the physical and temporary things around us. As believers, we stand to benefit far greater than what this present life is offering us. Family, there's more to life than our naked eyes can see. You know that. However, we have to open our hearts and minds and look through the eyes of faith in Christ Jesus to see and be convinced about it. I believe the best of my days are yet to come. This will be revealed upon Christ's return. What say you on this matter? In Paul's day, Corinth was a striving commercial hub, 
buzzing with all kinds of activities, business and pleasure. You name it, Corinth had it. It was the main shipping port for the Mediterranean world with large cargo passing through. People would come in, stick and stay, while others would cash in on business or pleasure and move on. Not to mention their religious culture, the worshipping of many false gods. No doubt, Paul would have known and heard of the bad influence that the outside world was having on the church in Corinth. One main issue that came up for discussion was the resurrection of the dead. Disciples were also being tempted by this lifestyle of living for pleasure with no lasting value. Paul had to remind them that Jesus, the first resurrection from the dead, is their Lord. Therefore, they are not to risk losing their eternal destiny for a short time of pleasure in this life with no lasting value. Brothers and sisters, it is no different in our day and age. We too are surrounded and tempted by worldly influences. Even in the religious community, we see that what some of what is going on, we see the negative impact it can have on us. We must fight these temptations and guard against them. The word of God is what saves us through faith in Christ Jesus. Not religious views or intellectual beliefs that can be so convincing and persuasive at times. God is our provider. He always provides for us in desperate times and desolate places. There's a lot of wisdom in what Paul is saying to us here in 1 Corinthians chapter 15. Those who actually walked with Jesus would understand this concept very well. Because not only did they believe, they know that Jesus was raised from the dead. In fact, they were eyewitnesses to this. As a result, they live their lives above and beyond the influences of this world. The writer of Hebrews tells us that the world is not worthy of them. They see themselves as foreigners, strangers, living in a strange land. Hebrews 11 verse 38. No persecution, no worldly influence, not even death could shake their conviction and faith in Christ Jesus. They were looking forward to be with Jesus in a better home than what this world is offering upon his coming. We too, family, have this great hope and promise. I encourage you, let nothing, nor no one, shake your faith as you wait upon the coming of the Lord. Yes, there's a greater home awaits us. Jesus extended an invitation to each of us over 2,000 years ago when he laid his life down for us and invited us into a relationship with him. He has gone to prepare for us according to John 14, verse 2. He is coming back to claim us as his own. This should be, this should give us the confidence we need to grow in our faith, in our knowledge, and in our walk with him. This should be the driving force in our lives. It should give us the strength 
and courage we need to fight sin and its temptation daily in order to remain faithful to the end. As we look forward to the coming of the Lord, may I suggest that we do these three things? One, be prepared. Two, be confident of his coming. Three, make, make every effort to reach as many as possible. Be prepared. How do we do this? Jesus in Mark chapter 13 verses 32 through the 37 tells us. It reads, No one know about the day or hour, not even the angels in heaven, not the Son, but only the Father. Be on your guard. Be alert. You do not know when that time will come. It's like a man going away. He leaves his house and puts his servants in charge, each with his assigned task, and tells the son at the door to keep watch. Therefore, keep watch, because you don't know when the owner of the house will come back, whether in the evening or at midnight, or when the rooster crows at dawn. If he comes suddenly, don't let him find you sleeping. What I say to you, I say to everyone, watch. This is Jesus speaking through his servant Mark. And from what he is saying, it is clear no one except the Father knows about the coming of the Lord. However, what we do know, it will be sudden and will catch some off guard. Mark used some key phrases that should help us to see the seriousness of this matter. Phrases such as, be on your guard, be alert, and keep watch. Jesus wants us to take his return seriously because it carries with it grave consequences. Keep in mind what Matthew 24 verse 35 said, before one of my word pass, heaven and earth will, said Jesus. Jesus' purpose for telling us about his coming is not to stimulate discussions around predictions, time, or date. Or date, no. It is to warn us with the hope that we will be ready for his return. Are you ready? Will you be prepared? Family, the only safe choice is to obey him now. Today is the day. Friends, life is all about choices. You make them every day. This is the moment. This is the opportunity you now have to make the best choice of your life. Making Jesus Lord of your life. I assure you, you will not regret it. Speak to the person who gave you this link. Help will be provided for you. Church, I believe there will be no last minute preparation. No repentance by praying Jesus into your heart as some would want us to believe. By then, you would have made your choice. And the choice you make will determine your eternal destiny. Be prepared for the coming of the Lord. Second point, be confident of his coming. As believers, we are to be confident 
about the coming of the Lord. In 2 Timothy 4, verses 6 through to 8, we see a man who was beaming with confidence about the Lord's coming and what it means for him and others. 2 Timothy 4, verses 6 and 8, it reads, For I have already been poured out like drink offering, and the time has come for my departure. I have fought the good fight. I have kept the faith. Now in store for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will award to me on that day. And not only me, but also to all who have longed for his appearance. Paul was fully aware that his time in this life is coming to an end. Still, it didn't matter to him. In fact, I believe he was excited about it. Look at how he described it. The time for my departure, not that departure. Meaning, he was leaving. It is as if he was about to catch a flight. Paul didn't worry about leaving this world because he knew he was confident about where he was going, to whom he was going, and what his reward would be upon Christ's return. As a result, he did everything he humanly possibly could do. And by the grace of God, is now looking forward to what Jesus has in store for him. I have been poured out like drink offering, Paul said. He gave his best. He gave his all. He had nothing left. He had nothing left to give. I have fought the good fight. I have kept the faith. I have finished the race. And now in store, not only for me, but for all who are longing for Christ's appearance, a crown of righteousness. Praise be to thee, O God. Marcus Garvey once said, Without confidence, you are twice defeated in the race of life. With confidence, you are a winner before you start. Paul epitomizes what Marcus Garvey said. What Paul is saying to us here is a perfect example of someone who is confident about something that will happen even before it happens. Growing up in a deep rural community of Clarendon, my grandmother would from time to time go to the town of Maypen to do business and shopping. She would always leave chores for my sister and I to do. We'll do it and more. But then, there was only one big passenger bus as a means of public transportation. It will come through the community at 7 to 7.30 in the mornings and 5 to 5.30 in the evening. Let me tell you, when my sister and I heard that bus horn tooting from a far distance, there would always be joy and excitement non-stop. Why? Because we know we were confident that our grandmother is on that bus and she's coming with goodies for us. In the same way, family, let us be confident about the 
coming of the Lord. In 1 John 2, verse 28, our brother John said it very well. And now, dear children, continue in him so that when he appears, we may be confident and unashamed before him at his coming. Well said, brother John. Family, a word to the wise is sufficient. If we continue in the faith and in obedience to God's word and that great and mighty day, we will not, we will have nothing to be ashamed of. We will be able to stand before him in confidence. Finally, make every effort to reach as many as possible. This is our goal. This is our calling. This is Jesus' final instruction to us before leaving earth. First, he called us into a relationship with him to love and serve him first and foremost and then to help as many as possible to know him. Matthew 28 verses 19 to 20. A passage of scripture you know very well. Then Jesus came to them and said, All authority in heaven and earth has been given to me. Therefore, go make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teach them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely, I'll be with you always until the end of age. Jesus is making it clear that all authority belongs to him. He is in charge. And he's saying to us that we are to go and make disciples. Baptize and teach them to obey his word. Family, we have work to do as we wait upon the coming of the Lord. Nothing should be more rewarding to us than seeing people coming to Christ. Seeing people's life change for eternity should be our greatest joy and satisfaction. Jesus gave us all the resources we need to get the job done. His word, his spirit, each other, and a harvest that is plentiful. Brothers and sisters, we know how to do it. Let us pray about it and put our faith in action. In closing, I say, the coming of the Lord is sure. It is real. Let's be prepared. Let us confidently and patiently wait for the coming of the Lord. Let us strive to have as many as possible ready for his coming. Thank you for listening. God bless you all. To him be the glory. Good morning, church. Uh, we have come to that time in our worship where we partake in the Lord's Supper. And the scripture I'll be reading from is 1 Corinthians 11, 23 to 26. Uh, in this passage of scripture, we'll see where Paul was writing to the church in Corinth and where he had to admonish them as to what the Lord's Supper is all about. And it reads, For I receive from the Lord what I also pass unto you. The Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. 
In the same way, after the supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. For whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. And I want us to focus on some things that the scripture shares. And um, here we see Jesus is saying to us, he wants us to remember his sacrifice for us, his death, his torture on the cross as a human. And he wants us to partake of his supper every week that we meet until he returns. It is my belief that Jesus died for us out of an intense love and care for us and obedience to the plan to save us. Please join me in prayer for the Lord's Supper as we proclaim and announce his death. Now let us pray. Amen. Father, we thank you for your son, Jesus Christ. We thank you for his sacrifice on the cross for us. We pray that the supper that we take, the bread that represents his body, and the fruit of the vine that represents his blood, we pray that as we partake in the supper that we remember his sacrifice and we remember this intense love that he, he so willingly gave to us on the cross. Father, we thank you so much for this sacrifice and we pray that as we, we take part in this supper that we'll never forget him. We pray in Christ's name. Amen. you
Good morning, Church. I trust we've been having a great time of worship so far. Now it's time for our announcements. We start off on a somber note with the news of the passing of a disciple. Our brother, Antonio Garcia, from the Maypen region, passed away on August 31st after ailing for some time. Please keep his family and the Maypen disciples in your prayers. And now for news of a baptism. We're happy to see the hand of God moving to rescue souls. On Saturday, September 3rd, Erica Amali, wife of Albert Amali from the St. Catherine region, was baptized into Christ. Please join me in welcoming our new sister. Midweek Devotions. We will be meeting this Wednesday at 7.30 p.m. for our midweek devotions. Midweek will be held by region this week and it will be held on the Zoom platform. Teen and Campus Devotionals. Teams, you will be meeting at 5.30 p.m. at Chris Dyer Villas, so you'll be meeting in person this week. Campus will be meeting at 6.30 p.m., the usual time, on the Zoom platform. And now here are our options for giving our offering. You may give your offering via the card machine at the church office on Mondays, Tuesdays and Fridays between the hours of 9 a.m. and 5 p.m. We also have the option of using online bank transfers or going into our local Scotia Bank branch to make a deposit. For online transfers and for deposits made at the bank, please call the church office for banking details. After the transaction is done, please email, call or text the church with the details of the type of offering that you gave, such as regular contribution, poor, or special missions. For US dollar online contributions, you may make use of PayPal. Use the address paypal.me forward slash KCOC in JA to transfer funds. And now, for next week's Sunday service, we'll be actually meeting in person at the Jamaica College Auditorium at 10 a.m. for service. If you're not able to make it to JC, no worries. We will be live streaming right here on this YouTube channel as well. So I look forward to seeing you then. It's now time for our final song. Who taught the sun where to stand in the morning? Who told the ocean you can only come this far? And who showed the moon where to hide till evening? Whose words alone can catch a falling star? Well, I know my Redeemer lives. I know my Redeemer.
defies this life.